Yeah, my name is Bill Fitzgerald. I live in Portland, Oregon. Um, I have basically I have I have been a teacher. I worked as an open source developer for about a decade, um, and I am currently working on a privacy evaluation initiative where I staff a coalition of about 100, 100 school districts at this point, um, and work with school districts, vendors, and privacy privacy advocates on evaluating the privacy policies in terms of service. And I'm doing this work with Common Sense Media. Excellent. And uh, in what uh, essence or factor, how does Creative Commons work into either the uh, figure into the work that you do or things that you just do in general? Um, so, yeah, I mean, I've, I've been working kind of with openly licensed material and um, and openly licensed software for, you know, again, for o over a decade at this point. Um, and when I was running Funny Monkey, my company, you know, everything, we were an open source development shop. So everything we did with the exception of design work, we would openly license and, um, and, and release back. So that, that ethos basically build, build it once, share, share as often as, as possible and work with people who want to improve it was baked into everything that we were doing from code to documentation um to uh to really any pretty much any and anything we touched we were committed to an open license um the flavor of open license would vary based on what the work was like it wouldn't make sense to put a creative commons license on a, on a piece of software because that's better suited for text but you know when it came to uh licensing any instructions or documentation that we created we would use creative commons work for that and our use of Creative Commons really morphed into kind of an understanding of the way open could both inform development methodologies and also business structure. Um, because when you work completely in the open, it forces you to really, it forces you to be aware of your strengths and your weaknesses in a way that if you are, if you are looking to make kind of your information or your code valuable through scarcity. That is that is a different business model than looking to help people understand through transparency. And those are very different skill sets. And the ability to work in the open and share openly and then take advantage, and actually I think take advantage is actually the right phrasing here, be able to take advantage of what other people were willing to contribute back, it is a much, stronger foundation for doing good work over time. Um, when you focus on creating value through scarcity, you kind of get stuck on that thing. When you focus on continual learning and continual improvement, you're more in a process of engagement and interaction, which helps you and those you work with get incrementally better or <laughs> publicly wrong over time. And both, both of those things have value. Great. Now, if, if there was a thing uh, to be certified in Creative Commons knowledge skills, what what would that mean to you to have a certification from Creative Commons, if anything? Nothing. Okay. <laughs> I mean, just I, yeah, that would be of no value to me. That's that's the kind of answer I'm looking for. And so uh, the the last question might not mean anything then. Um, what possibly could um, a process of being certified in Creative Commons? look like in terms of how it would someone would get and earn that certification if i was going to be doing this i would do a couple things i would have the certification curriculum be openly licensed i would have the ability to demonstrate mastery of that curriculum be learner driven and i would have the artifacts that people could then demonstrate that mastery, be also learner driven and subsequently openly licensed. So that way you are creating a decentralized and openly licensed, essentially repository of, of, of certification artifacts. And by, and I, I can see where there would be a fear of releasing that structure, but if you actually had a certification process that fed back in to the, kind of creative ecosystem that helped people define and redefine and improve what certification looked like, I think you'd actually start to have a, you'd start to have a certification system that has value because it's rooted in people demonstrating 
how they've mastered these, these various concepts. So the roadmap, the curriculum could be, could be defined clearly at the outset, but the means of demonstrating one's path along that curriculum could be entirely learner mediated. 